tech has come roaring back in 2023. Stocks are soaring, hedge funds and venture firms are dipping back into the market. Seven companies referred to on Wall Street as the Magnificent Seven, they have led the broader markets, expanding tech's leadership and creating trillions of dollars in value. The biggest narrative this year, artificial intelligence. This week in Tech Check, the tech trade is back, but can it last? Hype cycles come and go. The metaverse, Web3, crypto. What about the mother of all tech cycles, the dot-com bubble and burst? So right now, are we in the middle of another one with the generative AI and chat GPT? Stocks like Nvidia and Microsoft, they are at all-time highs. And those stocks in turn have driven the S&P. The seven biggest tech stocks are responsible for functionally all of the S&P stock gains in 2023. So if this feels like a moment of gigantic hype, you wouldn't be mistaken. But so was 1999. You remember when we'd go to cocktail parties in 1999 and 2000 and everybody and his brother, mother, sister, you know, uncle, cousin would be asking you how to get in on this. I will never forget going to a Chinese restaurant in Asheboro, North Carolina, oh, and the waiter asking me about CMGI. But if you take a look at the numbers, this moment of AI mania has nothing on the dot-com bubble. And based on the earnings and revenue figures on Wall Street, those stocks may actually be historically cheap still. One investment research firm recently wrote, we estimate that all of the gains in the S&P 500 this year can be attributed to AI. Nvidia has more than doubled this year, but other names far less proven in this shift have also surged just by peppering earnings calls and press releases with talk of AI, C3.AI, Palantir, or being AI adjacent like chip makers, Broadcom and AMD. And then there's the private markets where AI unicorns are being minted faster than you can say bubble. So is an AI bubble forming? Where are we in the relative hype cycle for transformational technologies? Some analysts say not for now. If you look at the price to earnings multiple for the NASDAQ 100, it is nowhere close to the peaks that we saw during the dot-com bubble, which ran up as high as 60 times forward earnings in March of 2000. Today, the forward P of the NASDAQ 100, it's closer to 26 times. You saw price earnings ratios. When you take out the five biggest stocks from the NASDAQ 100 in 1999-2000, the PE was 3,666. And of the nearly 500 companies that went public in 1999, 77% had no profits. It was a wildly different environment. Even big name stocks like Cisco and Qualcomm. In March of 2000, Cisco had a PE of 150, Qualcomm 167, and Yahoo at an unsustainable 623 times earnings. Today, big tech is a lot well, Tamer, NVIDIA, which has seen the biggest run-up, has a forward P of just around 50. Apple is at 30, Microsoft at 33, and Amazon is the highest of the bunch at 86. If you look at valuations today, back in the late 90s, they're two different things. The other thing that you're looking at is the commercialization. Back then, it was the Wild West. Nobody knew who, what the commercialization was going to be. We talked about all the benefits, all the potential. Here, you're seeing people adapt AI here and now. That means real companies with real business models. Back then, the rally was driven by investors flooding into newly public companies with no actual path to profitability, like Pets.com, which was actually one of five online pet stores that cropped up during that time. It spent huge money on marketing, $3 million on a Super Bowl ad, and it raced to beat its competitors to list despite operating at a huge loss. In the fourth quarter of 1999, it lost $42.4 million on just over $5 million in sales. Since its inception in February of 98, it had lost nearly $62 million on less than $6 million in sales. It was bankrupt by November. By contrast, the earnings report that sent Nvidia stock skyrocketing, it smashed every expectation and forecast, net income of more than $2 billion on more than $7 billion in revenue, and it expects sales of $11 billion in the current quarter. The AI revolution or, or what we're looking at right now is a handful of securities that are driving it. It's mature companies that have a path to profitability who have done this before. It's not a ton of companies with new technology that doesn't have quick adoption that are, that are hand tied causing a bubble to burst. Plus one crucial ingredient for a bubble is either massive liquidity, leverage or both money to fund the expansion of the bubble or people that are able to borrow cheap money to maximize returns. 
a lot of things have to come together where, you know, the, the money just starts to flow very indiscriminately. People don't care about valuations. They go to unprofitable companies. A tremendous number of new offerings swamp the market in terms of IPOs. And then interest rates probably have to be uh, unfriendly to pop it ultimately. Instead, central banks are shrinking their balance sheets and they're raising interest rates. So they're essentially narrowing that access to easy money. And yet, tech has continued to climb, which some analysts say is a sign of more stability. Perhaps it's because this time, tech is a lot more secure, with cash hoards so big that they're becoming the new defensive play. Just look at the difference between the sheer amount of cash on balance sheets. At the end of 1999, Cisco, for example, had just about $2 billion in cash and short-term investments. For Qualcomm, it was even less, $1.6 billion, and just $865 million for Yahoo. Today, the richest companies in the world are in tech. These are not bubbles. These are nation states. Apple, Alphabet, Microsoft, all with more than $100 billion cash hoards, so much so that Apple is still the richest company despite aggressively trying to decrease that pile over the last few years with hundreds of billions in record-breaking share buybacks. I think we threw out a bubble way too easily. I mean, uh, you know, to me a bubble is, is a stock that's four or five times above its fundamental values. And, you know, I don't think we're anywhere near that then. I think we were in the dot-com era. I think we were in the SPAC era. I think we were in, the, uh, in some of the crypto areas, but not there yet on AI. But what about this idea that the bubble is actually inflated by every company under the sun throwing AI into an earnings call and rallying? According to facts that 110 companies mentioned AI in their earnings call this quarter, including Heinz Ketchup. When a ketchup company is talking about AI, right. you don't stop and pause and say, give me a break. No, absolutely not. This is the greatest technology innovation or innovations we've seen in two decades. Let's compare it to the late 90s. The late 90s, we were talking about eyeballs and clicks. Here, Heinz and others are talking about real earnings and real cost savings. They're not talking about it in two or three years, they're talking about it next quarter, this year, the following year. Things are happening very quickly. But some analysts are taking the other side and they're raising red flags. Take a look at the chart again. Even though the NASDAQ 100 is below its peak of March 2000, it is still above average, trading at 25.6 times forward earnings instead of the average 23.5 times. Plus, look at its trajectory. This chart compares the NASDAQ 100 so far this year with its run-up in 1999. And it might also depend on which valuation metric you're looking at. Forget earnings. If you just look at NVIDIA, NVIDIA's stock is now trading above 36 times sales, and that's its highest valuation ever. According to Trivariate Research, that bodes poorly for its future based on the patterns of other shares that reach such heights. So what may be key here is a bubble is different than a pullback, but for now, the tech trade continues to draw back investors, even Cowpers, the country's largest pension fund, earmarking funds for venture capital investment after a decade of sitting it out.